Hey everybody, it's Chris Silvey with HealthyConsumer.com. What if I told you there was a way that you could significantly cut down on your grocery bills and the time that you spend planning meals for you and or your family? Well, fortunately, there is a way that you can do that, and that's through Plan to Eat. Now, let me just start by saying I'm not making a single cent off this review video of this product. I just want to share it because if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I, I'm a I'm a proponent of anything that can help us um, in terms of trying to adopt healthier lifestyles. And sometimes technology, when used responsibly, can do that. And so here's a prime example of that. So Plan to Eat is an online-based meal planning software. And what I love about that is that you could log into pretty much any device, whether it be your laptop, desktop computer, tablet, etc., mobile phone, and you can access all this information at any time. So when I log in and I wanted to plan my meals for the week, this is what I would see. This is my main dashboard, so to speak. And when I go into this, I can choose from any of the recipes that I've already imported from websites. And so that's that's probably, if you're going to use this software, that's probably the best way to do it. If you have recipe books, you can manually import them, uh, and which is still actually a relatively painless process. Uh, but it's, it's just a one-click import when you go into... Uh, website to pull in a recipe into your database. So let's get started. Let's let's look at this, and we'll look at the various parts of we'll look at the various parts of Plan to Eat. And when I come on here and I'm preparing for my my week, if I didn't need to add in any new recipes, this is where I would go. I would look and I would see that I could either put this recipe into a queue, much like Netflix, or I could. I could just put plan and slap the date on there, whatever day I'm going to plan that. And you'll we'll see the calendar view in a second. And and then I can pull up the cooking view, which I'll show you right now because this is a good time to show you. And this, that you could pull this up on your tablet, whatever you want to pull it up on. And you can see the various ingredients and then the step-by-step, -step, which I'm just scrolling through using my arrow keys or you could click whatever you want to do, whatever works for you. And so... Notice that it highlights a lot of the ingredients. Ah, I'm not too keen on brown sugar there, but um, and then and then you can close that out, and it's also accessible um, from the planner view. So the, here here's the main view, and you can sort and filter. Uh, you can search. You can do whatever you want to do from this main area here. You can also change it to more of a grid kind of base view there. And then you could go into your planner. So let's go in there for a second because I want to show you this and show you this is this is really where the program shines is this drag and drop type of approach. So I just I just arbitrarily put a few recipes on here for apparently I'm having gluten free quinoa bread for for uh, for supper on the 21st. Um, so we, if I click on that again, it pulls up all the ingredients. And then I could go into the cooking view. I could edit it if I saw any errors. I could print it. And so we could go back into our cooking view, just like that. When you're going to prep your food. And just clicking on it, you can get out all your ingredients right there as you're about to get ready to make your food. So you can see why this is this is an extremely beneficial tool in the meal planning process. I could just put, let's say I had to soak some lentils or something. Or not lentils, lentils don't need to be soaked for very long. Let's say we had to soak some cashews for vegan sour cream. I could add that in there if that were in the next day or reminders about the crock pot, that kind of stuff. So everything is right here, right where you need it. You can also share recipes with friends. And this is the queue that I was talking about. So if I needed, if I put something in the queue, but it didn't necessarily go onto the calendar, from there I could drag it and drop it onto whatever meal I wanted to bring it into, which there, there we go. Um, user error there. And then here's, here's the real selling point about plan to eat. It is the simplicity at which you can import recipes. So if I came on and I wanted to import this recipe into, I think it's already in there, but let's just, let me just show you. Um, if I wanted to just take this into my plan to eat, recipe book, all I have to do is one click here. I hit save recipe. And then this is what I see once I click that. I see the importing recipe. It's pulling up all the data. My computer's going a little slow. Uh, but, and then all the various components of that are usually pretty accurate and you can change it from main course. I got the title in there. It automatically pulled in the source. I didn't type any of this. 
I just edited out a couple seconds there because it was going really, my computer was lagging. And so I have all the directions. It pulled in any other data that it could find. And I got to say, it works really well with Pinterest. For whatever reason, it always formats almost perfectly. It pulls in the photo of the recipe. It does all those things. And then you can just go ahead and save it to your recipe book. And once you do that, it's it, it'll be in there forever. It's easy to use and it goes right back into that main menu that we that I showed you before. Now, you can manually type in recipes as well. And then once you have let's say let's just say that this were this was my week for uh this week. Now, here's here's what's great about plan to eat and a, another feature that I love about it is that once you've selected your week or specific days that you want to create a shopping list, it will automatically generate that for you. And not only does it automatically generate just the list, but it breaks it down into categories for you. So I know right where to get some of these things. Most of the time they're very accurate. And I'm quite impressed with how accurate it is, all things considered, with all the different formatting on the internet. So we have all these different ingredients that I could go in here. Maybe I already have chia seeds at home. I could just go ahead and I could just take that right off. Or I could select multiple and I could just take them right off. And then when I go to print this, it comes up in a nice print view. And then when I when I go to the store, I can see bit broken down by these keys that we'll have in the brackets there, what what ingredient is for what recipe. So sometimes I know if it's more critical, whether or not I get it. You can even you can even divide these up by stores too, and and another fantastic feature if you go to more than one store if you want to get certain things at different stores, you can make staples lists. You can add in all kinds of notes. Uh, I just got an email actually as I was making this video from on my other computer here. I see they've added in a new prep notes um, feature, and they're they're constantly revamping it. You can search for recipes. You can you can pull so many different things. I got to say on average now, it takes me probably about 30 to 45 minutes to plan for the whole week of meals. If I, if I'm really just focused in on it. And, and then when I go to the store, everything's just really organized. I I love this software. I, I don't really have many. I I know that most people want to see cons, the pros and cons of the software. And I don't really see many cons. Now it is, I will say though that it does have a subscription fee and I think right now it's around 350 per month if you do the annual if you do the annual subscription as I'm recording this it's $39 per year. So well worth it if you think about the total time and money you save in ingredients not just wandering around the store thinking how am I going to make a meal out of this and which can be really overwhelming if you're trying to get into healthier living. So Plan to eat.com really meant really recommend checking it out. I'm sure I left things out of this review, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have that that I know about this software. It's my main way that I plan for meals now. Um, like I said, I don't I don't receive any commissions on it, but if you do go to sign up, I'd I'd be extremely grateful if if you wouldn't mind typing in my account name here, uh, S O V E Y C H R. That'd be a nice way to get back at me for. Uh, for providing this review, I that that will just give me a little off my subscription from um, from what they're telling me on the website here, and be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, check out the rest of my channel. I have several other videos on gut healing and how to make wholesome foods in various ways, fermented foods, things like that. Also, check out my website, healthyconsumer.com, and feel free to leave any questions below. And thank you very much for listening to this.